Thanks, Becky. Hi, everyone. For those of you that participated last week, you already have um, a small view of what Portugal by Travel Tailors is all about and what we offer. And those who were not able to participate, they can always watch the recordings that Becky has shared or send us an email to request and you'll have all the information on us. And also you can get the information on Lisbon and surrounding areas, which is rather useful. So today we're going to the Alentejo and the Algarve. Portugal's divided more or less in the regions that you can see in this map. And the Alentejo um, is one of the largest regions of Portugal. Uh, it's half uh, covered by the, the ocean coastline. And then the other half is very interior, agriculture land, rolling hills, beautiful landscapes. The northern part of the Alentejo is very different from the southern part. It's a bit more mountainous, greener, um, more shrubbery. The, the southern part of the Alentejo is vast plains of um, cork oak trees, olive trees, animals grazing in the field. So lots of herds of sheep, of cows. This is what you see and on these beautiful plains. And, and here you can understand more or less the distances from these areas. So the Alentejo is very close to Lisbon. And what is Alentejo? Alentejo really means beyond the Tejo. Tejo is the river that comes from Spain and crosses Portugal and goes into Lisbon. And that's the river that you see when you're in Lisbon when you're looking on the, on the coast, on the, the border of the downtown area of Lisbon, that's the river you're, you have that will go and meet the Atlantic Ocean. So everything beyond that river is called Alentejo. Uh, and in the Alentejo, you also have a lot of names of towns that start with A-L. And this is a, a, quite a big Arabic influence, um, all of the names starting from A-L and even the word Alentejo. Also, you have a lot of Arabic influence in the pottery, in the houses, the whitewashed houses, the food. Um, a lot of that came from, from the Moors. Um, and as well, in the Alentejo, you have a lot of Moorish castles. You can imagine all of the battles that were held in these, in these lands, in these fields, which is really interesting, especially for history lovers, a lot of UNESCO heritage. And here you can see in this picture, you have a few of the images of the Alentejo and we're going to see a bit more. So we're going to start off by talking about the experiences that can be enjoyed. We have this divided by couples and by families. So it's a list of all of the things that we can plan for your clients during their trips to the Alentejo area. And then we'll obviously go into the Algarve. So there's quite a lot that can be done in the Alentejo. Uh, for families as well as for, um, for couples, uh, for groups of friends. There's a lot of properties in the Alentejo that can work as wonderful buyouts as well besides the hotels. And then it's a matter of preference and what people want to enjoy more. The coastline, the coastline is very preserved. There aren't many large hotels on, along the coast and there aren't beachfront hotels because it's mostly not allowed. So you have, it's, it's very practical to have a car or a driver. And here you can see the absolute gorgeous beauty of the beaches in the Alentejo. This is one of the closest ones to Lisbon, this top corner, the Arrabi, the beach, which is absolutely magnificent, part of a national park as well. Villanova de Milfons along the coast to area, one of the most beautiful uh, Instagrammable shots that can be taken. Another beautiful beach down here. So all of these gorgeous, gorgeous beaches are along the coast. Something that we love, absolutely love doing and uh, recommending to clients, horse riding on the beach. You can see the extension of sand here. It seems like it doesn't end. The Comporta Beach, about an hour and 15 minutes or so from Lisbon, is the longest beach in the country, 60 something kilometers of beach. And this is something you can enjoy in the summer and in the winter. You can see by these pictures, these are taken by us. And the one on the left with the, the, the boy and the girl, that's my daughter actually. And they're riding on the beach in a summer month. The water is absolutely crystal clear. The girls on the right are riding in the winter. Um, so it's, it's gorgeous and 
these are unconcessioned beaches. That's why it's allowed to horse ride here. We can organize a picnic on the beach, a private horse riding. It's beautiful. And there's a community of dolphins that lives in the Rabida area, in this area also near, near Setubal, near Troya. These are the towns in this area. The community of dolphins has lived here for years. They're wild dolphins. They're preserved and well taken care of by the biologists that work these um, in this area. And also the, the partners we work with that provide these tours, they take care of these animals. Um, all of these tours are done with great care and it's simply to observe the animals. So it's done on rubber boats or on catamarans, on the larger yachts, but all with care for the animals. And this is my niece actually um, doing this, uh, this beautiful tour. Um, canyoning is absolutely fun to do also on the Rabida National Park coastline near the water. This is super fun for those who are into adrenaline filled activities. Um, and we can organize this in private. As you can see here in this picture, uh, one of our clients, a couple, they had a special day to celebrate and they wanted to do a canyoning. So they did this in private. They had a special picnic set up for them on a secluded beach near the Sizimbra area. These are all areas very, very close to Lisbon. And they're absolutely beautiful. There's many deserted and secluded beaches that aren't as accessible by, um, by car, but very accessible uh, by boat. So if the water permits, if the ocean permits, uh, the boats can get very close to these beaches, prepare a lovely picnic, the clients can take this on the boat, and then just enjoy a secluded beach with almost no one there. Um, rock climbing as well in this area, super fun to enjoy and picnics. They can be set up anywhere in the Alentejo area. They can be a more traditional style picnic, as you can see here with your um, blanket on the floor and the traditional picnic baskets, tasting Portuguese products, Portuguese wine, or why not a nice, more elegant setup with a table outside uh, served by a chef and traditional Portuguese dishes, the amazing wine as well. Um, lots of options for sailing on yachts or catamarans in this area, uh, oyster tasting. We can set up a beautiful picnic style uh, lunch or snack on one of the boats with champagne, with wine, whatever the clients wish, and just enjoy the day, morning, afternoon, full day, privately along these waters, jumping into the ocean, swimming. And there are a, a few little sandbanks in this area as well. So all of this is very close to Comporta, very close to Lisbon and these beautiful sandbanks. You can stop, enjoy some time there, then continue on the boat. Also in Sizimbra, so in the, one of the towns that I had previously mentioned, our, our chef that we work with and that we do show cookings at his home uh, or workshops uh, in Lisbon also has um, a place in Sizimbra where he takes clients to the market and the market here is absolutely fabulous. The fruits, the vegetables, the fish, it's all produced by local farmers, local fishermen that go fishing. It's one of the most popular fishing areas in the country. And he chooses wonderful, delicious seafood, makes this with the clients and you enjoy learning how to cook, learning about the seafood, understanding how the market is and just enjoying a great meal afterwards. And the towns. So the Alentejo is full of absolutely gorgeous, beautiful towns. As I had mentioned, these Moorish castles uh, all built on the hills and, and the little towns are all inside the forts. Uh, really, really beautiful, whitewashed buildings, gorgeous little flowers, well taken care of. This here on the top left corner is one of the palaces in a town called Villa Vissosa. This is the Duke's palace. It's a museum that can be visited. So all of this, our experiences to enjoy throughout the entire Alentejo. And these are just a few examples. And you can see we love horses. <laughs> um, we have in Portugal a very beautiful breed of horses, the Lusitano horse. It's one of the most exquisite horse breeds in the world, used for many, many events. And the Lusitano is, is found all over Portugal. Uh, and you can ride the horse 
anywhere. So on the Alentejo fields and the vineyards, it's absolutely gorgeous to just enjoy these views. And if your clients enjoy this type of activity, it's a perfect place in Portugal to really take advantage of, of these horses enjoying beautifully set up picnics. This actually is a property that can be used as a buyout uh, for, for larger families. Um, and it's a huge property. You don't see the end of, of the property. Absolutely gorgeous. And this is one of the spots to set up a beautiful picnic with these views of the dam and activities that you can enjoy on this dam. The Alkiva Dam has a number of experiences from boat riding, from actually boat houses or boat hotel rooms uh, on the dam, on the water, um, the, the water, water wakeboarding uh, or skiing, paddling and kayaking, lots of fun to do with family and as couples, as friends. The wine tasting is phenomenal. One of my favorite places for wine is the Alentejo. These are stronger wines, um, but absolutely delicious. And then tasting them with the prosunto, with the chorizo, olive oil tasting as well is magnificent and something definitely worthwhile in the Alentejo region because we have absolutely delicious olive oil in, in Portugal. Pottery. Uh, this is a huge tradition in Portugal, and the Alentejo has really, really beautiful pottery, hand-painted, handmade, and this is something that it could be brought into the hotel, or clients can go to the workshop, to the atelier of the, the artisan, and enjoy learning how to make any of these pieces, and painting them, and taking something home that is actually done by them. Besides the pottery, um, cork workshops are also something really wonderful to enjoy in Portugal. We're one of the largest cork producers in the world and there's so much that can be made out of cork to just understand the magnificent product that it is and how versatile and sustainable it is, is also wonderful. Um, yoga is becoming more and more popular and there are many, many properties and hotels in Portugal that provide yoga retreats and have beautiful locations to enjoy the practice of yoga. Uh, the, the hot air balloons in the Alentejo, it's the perfect place to do this because the weather permits it during the summer months without much of a problem. And during the other months of the year as well, it's usually done early morning sunrise, absolutely gorgeous to enjoy. And bird watching, we have a number of species of birds in, in all of Portugal, actually. Very close to Lisbon, there are some places as well to, to enjoy the bird watching. And we have species that one would expect to just see in Africa, for example, and there are tons of them. So for bird lovers, it's magnificent to take advantage of these opportunities to go with a biologist and enjoy this. More beautiful towns. This is absolutely magnificent. This is called Elvish. It's a town very close to the Spanish border, not far from Évora, which is a more well-known popular town in the Alentejo. It's, Évora is about an hour and a half from Lisbon. Um, we actually went to Évora yesterday for lunch. It's very quick to get there. My daughter is living there, working there now as a veterinarian. These are all agricultural areas from Évora to Elvish is a very quick 30 minute ride. And this is a fortified town. You can see the absolute beauty of the, the way this town was built. This is UNESCO World Heritage. So all of this is gorgeous to, to just visit and enjoy. Jeep tours throughout the Alentejo Plains, the dark skies in the evening in the Alentejo are absolutely amazing because there are very few city lights. So you really see the sky and the stars. And there are some observation um, centers that have fabulous telescopes to really enjoy and interpret the dark skies. And they help with this. They can do this privately or in group. Um, and we also can get them to go to certain hotels to, to provide this experience. And here on the top left corner, you can see something that's very unique. We have a bone chapel in Evora. It's literally made of human bones inside, uh, which is not for everyone, but it's 
I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's really, really interesting to, to see. This church is just an example of one of the most beautiful churches in a town in the Alentejo, uh, Vienna de Alentejo. And there's much, much more Roman bridges in other towns of the Alentejo. The black pork is something that definitely has to be tried in, in, in Portugal, the presunto. Um, and farm to table experiences. So this is super fun for families uh, to really just go and see how everything is made, delicious food, um, the, the, what we call petiscos in Portugal. Petiscos are like the Spanish tapas uh, and these are absolutely delicious to enjoy as snacks, as meals. We love to get together with friends and family and just uh, make or order at a restaurant different Petiscos. So it would be cheeses, chorizo. You can see in this picture, this is a clay pot and you, you fill it up with this um, brandy type liquor that we call uh, burning water, agua ardente. And you fill the bottom, you light it with a match so it fires up and you roast your sausage there. Uh, it's delicious. Everyone has one of these. Every Portuguese person has one of these at home. And this is just something fun that you enjoy with your friends and your family with some cornbread, with some cheese, um, scrambled eggs with asparagus. These are just a few examples of, of, what, um, of what we're talking about. And you can see this pot here. This is a hand painted Alentejo wine jug. So it's really beautiful and traditional. And we definitely love um, to, to showcase our traditions. Um, there's a really, really lovely um, safari park, not far from Lisbon. It's called the Badoka uh, Park. And they have some uh, wild animals roaming the fields. And these animals are very domesticated as you can see from these pictures. Uh, so it's really, really fun to enjoy this privately with children or even without, if you have um, animal lovers, this is a really nice park to visit and a, a lovely day trip from, from Lisbon or from other locations of the Alentejo. This is very close to the coast uh, of the Alentejo. And for those who are familiar with, um, with Stonehenge, we have our own Stonehenge. It's not far from Evora. So on the way to Evora, uh, clients can stop and see this, um, it's really, really magnificent to imagine how many years this has been here. And for those of you who are familiar with the Outlander series, well, it can happen, as you can see from my pictures here. And now let's go into the hotels in the Alentejo region. We divide them from luxury, premium, and boutique. So luxury will be the five stars. Some of these hotels aren't categorized with stars and we don't really pay that much attention to the category. We like to focus on location, decor, service, professionalism, the style, and match the hotel to your clients' interests and, and preferences. And that's something that we need to know and we need you to transmit to us. So these hotels that we mention here are the ones we like to use most. And we're just gonna go through a few of them. So you've got the premiums, which are maybe four stars and the boutiques are smaller hotels uh, that would fall between the four and five star um, category. And here on the map is just to give you an idea. You can see how large the Alentejo region is because you've got Lisbon down here and it goes all the way up here and almost all the way down to the Algarve. And we have a little focus here on the closer to the Lisbon area, the nor northern part, and then the more southern part of the Alentejo. And we're going to go from north to south. So we're going to go from what's closest to Lisbon and further down on the coast and into the interior. So we'll start with um, a Casa Palmela. I believe it'll be the next slide. And then we'll move, we'll move down and then go over into the interior and then further down. So here you have Casa Palmela. Casa Palmela is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous estate. The owners of the property right now uh, is the grandson of the Duke of Palmela. So grandson or great grandson, I'm sorry, I hope I'm not mistaken. Um, 
and they renovated fully the property. It's an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous estate with a main manor house, the garden house. And then to the side, they actually have four more villas and the villas can be privatized as an entire area with their own swimming pool. The swimming pool you see here belongs to the garden house and main house. And they have an absolutely fabulous restaurant as well. So this is almost like a museum. They have a chapel inside the main house, very close to this room, which is the romantic room. And here you have a quick fact sheet. So as you can see, it's a small property, only 21 rooms and four villas. Absolutely gorgeous, fabulous location to just bike, to walk around. There are many trails on property to enjoy. You can walk for about um, 30 minutes or so and get to the ocean. You can horse ride on property. They have their own horses. Uh, so it's, it's really a beautiful place. Also many yoga retreats are held here. They'll be holding retreats in November, one week of yoga with food, with everything that is prepared to just, you know, relax and, and sink into to everything and to introspect and to, to just enjoy. Um, then coming down to, to Comporta, we've got the Sublime Comporta, which is a fabulous property. Um, it's located within this pine uh, area estate. It's about 10 minutes from the beach. So they have shuttle service to the beach and they also set up an amazing beach club right on the beach with restaurant and just enjoying that beautiful Comporta Beach area. You can see from the pictures, the decor is really beautiful and they have a number of villas, up to five bedroom villas. Um, so here you have the beautiful uh, picture of a room and all of the facilities, only 23 rooms, but they have 22 villas. Um, they also have a really interesting room type, which are these bio pool suites with their own private pools. They're set up on this biological lake, um, which is super, super interesting. And then they built in these pools. Uh, so around the pool, you've got the plants and the fish and the animals that maintain this biological uh, pool. And then you have the private little pool that doesn't have anything in it coming out from the room. So really, really nice. Coming down further along the coast, the Santiago Cooking in Nature. It's a really lovely property. So this is a bit less expensive than the other ones that were mentioned previously. It could be for a more budget client, but really beautiful, great location, close to a small town, lovely swimming pool, very relaxing. And they have a number of cooking workshops, also a small property that fits in well with our style of, of boutique. And further down, this would be your very traditional um, stay in the Alentejo. These are what we call the rural tourisms in the Alentejo. So it's located on a rural estate, a very, very small property. It's called Teima, and it's very beautiful. Only nine rooms and suites. So very exclusive, really lovely, relaxing, and great for those who want something different and a bit more traditional into the Alentejo style. Further into the interior of the Alentejo, we're going off into Evura, which is the town that we mentioned we love to take clients to visit and to walk around. It's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful medieval style town with so much to see. And this property is what we would call a bed and breakfast located in the center of the town. It's a building that was transformed into a hotel very traditional. You can see from the tiles on the walls, this is super, super traditional in houses in Portugal. Also, the arched ceilings and the stone inside the buildings, absolutely traditional, and the Arabic Moorish influence that we were talking about. So this property is really, really beautiful. Right in the center of town, great location to walk out and to enjoy the Evura town center and all it has to offer, the churches, the bone chapel, the Roman temple, everything. And going into the Alentejo a bit deeper, we have one of my personal favorite hotels in Portugal, São Lourenço do Barrocal. And why is that 
it's because São Lourenço do Barrocal really showcases everything that is authentic in Portugal. Uh, this was a, a working farm. So this was a property where an estate, a very, very large, large estate, uh, over 700 acres, and it's still family owned, and it's been family owned for over 400 years. It was fully renovated to become a hotel, a very, very beautiful and fabulous hotel, wonderful service. If you look at the pictures of this hotel carefully, you will feel that it's very simple and modest, and it is, and that has a purpose and a reason. This, is, this was done to, to showcase what the Alentejo houses were. So when this was a working farm, the rooms that are now hotel rooms, they were houses for the families that worked on these farms. Uh, so these, you can imagine how small the houses were. This was a full community. The restaurant, uh, now restaurant was the, the, the school um, and uh, the, the shop was the kennel for the dogs. So everything was transformed and done to the most authentic style of Alentejo. All of the flooring was handmade by artisans. This is clay bricks in every single flooring of the hotel, the rooms, the common areas, the woodwork, everything is Portuguese, made in Portugal from beginning to end. And on property, they have their own cows, their own pigs, their own sheep, their own horses. They produce their own honey, olive oil, wine, everything. They have their um, vegetable garden, which is used for the restaurant. The restaurant is absolutely fabulous. The food is amazing. And the breakfast is one of the best that I've had and seen in, in a hotel in, in Portugal. So you can trust us that this is a magnificent choice for, for clients. They have trails to walk around and to horse ride in, around seven kilometers of trails to bike, to go down to the water because you can go to a dam. And from property, you can see this beautiful uh, town called Montserrat, which is built on the hill uh, with, a, um, with a fort around it. So really, really beautiful and, and beautiful to just go and visit that town, enjoy a lunch or a dinner at the local restaurants there as well. This is a place that your clients want to stay for two or three nights and just enjoy and just relax and really uh, drink in everything that is Portuguese. And another beautiful property, not far from the São Lourenço de Barrocal is Torre de Palma, also a renovated manor house, uh, transformed into a hotel. Many of the traditional Alentejo style was kept here in the corner. You can see a, a traditional Alentejo kitchen, which is a common area and can be used to set up a private meal, for example, for clients. Here you find a bit more decor to the rooms, which is really nice as well. Um, and they also have horses on property for riding. They produce their own wine as well. Very beautiful and small property as well. Only 19 rooms and suites. They have an indoor pool, which can be very, um, very fun and, and interesting for clients, especially during winter months. And that was it for the hotels in the Alentejo. Yeah. to see it after. And now we'll continue off uh, into the Algarve. So the Algarve, well, the Algarve is probably known by most as a beach destination and just for going to the beach. That's not the case. The Algarve does have a lot to offer. Many of the activities that I mentioned in the Alentejo can also be enjoyed in the Northern Algarve area. Uh, also, the Algarve in the 15th century is where the Portuguese took off to discover the world. And for those of you who don't know, the Portuguese was, Portugal was one of the largest world empires ever for the longest time. Um, we returned our last colony in 1999, which was Macau to China. So until 1999, we still owned other lands in the world. Uh, and Portugal actually had uh, colonies in every single continent of the world. So our empire went from the 1400s until the, the 1900s with, with lands owned all over the world. And this is where they took off to discover everything. And here we also have a large list of um, experiences that can be enjoyed both by couples, families, friends, and um, and focused on children as well. 
So many of these activities, which we're going to go through, are, are adaptable to everyone, to every single age, to different groups. If you have multi-gen families coming in, it can all be adapted. So the Algarve is all about the absolute beautiful beach landscapes and the rock formations along the beaches. I'm sure many of you have heard of the Benadjil Caves and the caves around the area of Lagos. There are many, many beautiful caves to visit and to just enjoy boat rides, going into them, coming out, maybe kayaking. And the, the Praia de Rocha, another beautiful, beautiful location. Also, the deserted islands in, in the Algarve are absolutely beautiful. So this would be the more Eastern Algarve area from Faru towards Spain. We have a lot of sandbanks along one of the areas of the Algarve, and this is a beautiful, beautiful place to, to visit. And how do we do that? With either catamaran or a yacht. So a half day or a full day cruise along what is called the Ria Formosa area. So this is a national park area, also going into the ocean and along these absolutely gorgeous sandbanks, stopping and enjoying the beach or going to um, a restaurant maybe. There aren't, there, there aren't many facilities on these sandbanks. Most of them don't have absolutely anything, but one or another uh, has a restaurant and they're accessible only by, by boat. So it's a really fun thing to enjoy. And you can see here, uh, one of our partners, the, the Villa Mont, which we'll talk about soon, um, has an absolutely uh, beautiful experience, which is just going privately or with some people from the hotel on the boat to the beach, one of these deserted sandbanks and enjoying a half day, a full day, whatever the clients want to enjoy with their beach set up there, taking a picnic with them. And you can see from this picture here, the water is absolutely crystal, crystal clear. And uh, the part that is closer to the shore, there's, there isn't much movement to the ocean. So it's very calm without, uh, without many waves. It's a beautiful, beautiful experience. Also something really cool, and this is in the very tip tip of the Algarve very Eastern location, uh, you can see here that these people are floating and they look muddy. So this is a salt harvest field. And this water is literally filled with salt. So they're floating because of the salt in the water. And this is the only salt harvest field that actually created a spa experience. So this is like the most inexpensive spa ever. <laughs> and you can just have your clients go here and rub salt on their bodies, fill themselves with this muddy salt uh, um, uh, clay that they give the clients to just rub all over, float around, and afterwards scrub it all off, maybe enjoy a massage with essential oils that they also provide here. Uh, another fun experience are the oyster farms that um, Ria Formosa is most famous for, and we have the best oysters coming from there. And a show cooking or a chef table experience or a workshop with a chef going to the local markets. The market of Olhão in the Algarve region is an absolute fabulous, fabulous market. On Saturday mornings, it's a wonderful thing to visit, a uh, wonderful place to see all of the local producers, the local fishermen bringing in the seafood, bringing in the fish, vegetables, fruits, everything. And going with the chef, picking everything out, making a wonderful meal and the salt harvesting that I mentioned. So there's quite a few of these along the Algarve. Uh, horse riding is also possible in the Algarve area. The Algarve is very, very uh, famous for the canning industry. Uh, and we still have many canned products, the sardines, the tuna, the seafood. And this is a really interesting industry to discover and to enjoy cooking workshops for children, why not? and the medieval festivals. We have a lot of medieval festivals in Portugal and the Algarve has quite a few. And this is what I had mentioned about the Algarve isn't just beach. There are many beautiful medieval towns to visit and the delicious sweets. So here we have more Arabic and Moorish influence, the figs with the almonds or the nuts and these marzipan um, 
funny animal uh, or sea, um, seashells designs. And these are made with, um, with this delicious almond flour and, and sugar and very sweet, fun to enjoy a workshop as well. And the Jeep tours in the Algarve in the more mountainous area, maybe a picnic, being a farmer for a day, being a sailor for a day and going sailing, a dolphin observing as well is possible in the Algarve. And now we'll go into the hotels of this region. So you already know the drill, uh, our division luxury premium boutique. And we're going to go from the Western coast to the Eastern coast of the Algarve and mention a few of the hotels that we most love. And here you can see on the map, we've got them all listed. And you can see along here, you've got them all along the, the coast of the Algarve. And we're starting off with the Villa Vita Park. This is an absolutely fabulous resort. It's a large resort and you would think, okay, our style is always a bit more boutique, a bit smaller, and this is a very large, large resort. You can see here, 203 rooms. That's a lot of rooms, but the property is huge and very, very spread out. And the rooms are spread in different buildings and they're absolutely beautiful, beautiful landscape. The gardens are extremely well taken care of and everything, everything is found on property to just enjoy an amazing relaxing vacation for couples or for families. And they don't feel like they need to leave property if they want to just relax. So you have a lot of different room styles. You have family rooms and suites and you know everything for everyone. And the property has a number of swimming pools, six outdoor swimming pools. Also a number of private villas on property as well. Besides the apartments, besides the suites, there are five private villas. Um, and besides all of this, about 10 restaurants on property and a Michelin star restaurant as well. And off property, there's quite a few restaurants, three more restaurants off property. They have access to a very, very small beach right from the hotel, just climbing down the steps and you have your own beach right there. And one of the uh, outdoor swimming pools is heated. So this is a great choice for those who are looking for everything in one place. Also, um, sorry to move forward. Uh, also, uh, it's very close to the Lagos area and they have a yacht. So sailing and, and just enjoying sailing along the coast to going to the Lagos area to see those rock caves and formations also possible from this property without any problem. And here we have the Bella Vista. The Bella Vista is in Putimão. So we're still on the Western part of the Algarve. This is located on Praia da Rocha, which is a beautiful beach. It's a very long extension of beach and a flatter area and flatter access, which is something that's not so common throughout the Algarve. Many hotels are on top of the hills and they have a, a more mountainous and rugged um, terrain to come down to the ocean. But this property is a beautiful manor house that is um, family owned and fully renovated as a hotel right on the beach. So you just walk down these steps and you're on the beach. It's absolutely eclectic, gorgeous decor. All of the rooms are different and they have three separate buildings. So the main house, what was the butler's house is now also renovated into rooms and the spa building or garden building that has mostly ocean facing, ocean facing rooms and a very small spa within the property, which is excellent for relaxing as well. This property also has a Michelin star restaurant. So a great choice, very small, only 38 rooms. And for those wanting beachfront, absolutely perfect. And we also have the Tivoli Carvoeiro, which is a more budget option, an amazing sky bar. This hotel is very large, but you don't feel it because it's built into the rocks on a cliff um, in a concave shape. So it's facing the ocean and it is built down. You go into the hotel and the rooms go down 
which is an interesting feeling because this way it doesn't feel like a huge hotel. You do not see a very large building above ground level. And you can see, so 248 rooms is pretty large, but you don't feel it. And it's an absolutely beautiful view if the rooms are sea view facing. They have a tiny, tiny little beach, which when the tide comes in, gets fully covered. Um, but there's an, a larger beach walking distance or a quick car ride or taxi ride as well. And one of our favorite properties in the Algarve. So now we've come into the more uh, Eastern part of the Algarve and we are at Villamont Farmhouse. And the Villamont Farmhouse doesn't feel like a beach hotel. It's located in a beautiful estate, beautiful property with a gorgeous garden, everything well taken care of, beautifully decorated rooms with white coloring to them, very light and relaxing. And it's only 55 rooms, a swim, two swimming pools outside, they have a gym, they have a massage cabana, they have an absolutely fabulous restaurant, one of the best chocolate mousses with salt, fleur de sal, um, mixed in the mousse, really delicious. And uh, here they also uh, have the, the, what I was mentioning, the chef's table experience, going with the chef to the market, and the Villamont provides that experience that I had shown you on the deserted beaches going by boat to the beach and just enjoying that relaxing experience, as well as many others. Uh, the Praia Verde Boutique Hotel, located on the beach about 700 to 800 meters walking distance, is a great choice for um, maybe a lower budget, families. Some of the rooms have a kitchenette, so that's very, very practical. And this is a beautiful, beautiful beach area. This is one of the most chosen by the Portuguese, the Praia Verde. It's absolutely fabulous, great beach restaurants right on the beach, um, relaxing, normally not a touristy area. So it's a more residential family area, great for those with children. And it's a small property as well. Also a great restaurant on property. And the parking, uh, in front of the hotel is not difficult. So it's wonderful for those who want to be beachfront. And this lovely place here, gorgeous bed and breakfast called Conversas de Alprendre, which we just recently visited, spent a night there, and it's amazing. This is a family owned property. They have also very few rooms, only 13. And you can see from the style here, these pictures were all actually taken by myself. Uh, and you can see the rooms, they're very light, very lovely, different decor, beautiful style. Besides the main house and the rooms they have in the main house, they have three other separate uh, rooms. They have this one here in the middle, which they call the warehouse, which was just recently built. Can you imagine? They were stuck, not really stuck, they were lucky. They had their carpenter with them during quarantine last year. And the carpenter was, like I said, stuck in, on property with them. So they ended up building this warehouse, which is fabulous because it's transformed into a room during the summer months. And during the winter months, it's used as another interior restaurant for, for the hotel, which is wonderful. And this is really beautiful. Outside of the warehouse, there's a private little pool which is great. And they also have a cabana. The cabana is fully, fully made out of logs. It's, it looks like a log cabin with a room inside, also a private pool in front. And they built a tree house, which is beautiful. So you climb up the steps and you're in this gorgeous tree house that was built around this beautiful tree. And you can see the ocean from the top. It's really, really a wonderful place to stay the food is magnificent, the property is relaxing, and it's not a long drive from, uh, from the beach. So it's only two kilometers, very, very easy to get to in this region that we absolutely love in the Algarve. And our last hotel in the Algarve that is fabulous is the Grand House. The Grand House was a hotel owned by one of the most um, well-known uh, canning industry uh, a gentleman in, in Portugal. And he actually had the hotel for his clients and customers uh, when, when it was first built. 
And this was um, abandoned for many, many years. And now it was fully renovated again uh, to, to bring it back to life. And it's like going back in time. It's absolutely gorgeous. The restaurant breakfast room is amazing, overlooking the marina, as you can see here. Um, a wonderful cocktail bar. And besides this beautiful building and the rooms they have in this building, they have a beach club, which is about a five minute drive from the hotel. The hotel has their own car that will take clients to a shuttle service to the beach club or further to the beach location. The beach club has a tiny little beach and a swimming pool. The swimming pool can be used by the hotel clients only. Um, the restaurant can be accessed by the public as well. It's absolutely delicious and a magnificent view to just sit and enjoy a meal here. It's fabulous. And they are also building a new area, which is the Grand Cafe, which will be part of the hotel in a separate building. Also um, with uh, art gallery, with uh, arts and craft shops, with the lovely cafe to enjoy some meals, um, a men's cigar room. So it'll be a really nice complex to add to the rooms of the Grand House. And here you have the fact sheet. So you can see it's also a very, very small property. And that is pretty much everything that we want to share with you now about the Algarve. And we have much more to share when you make requests for your clients and we're happy to help with everything that you need. And here you have our team that will be helping you out in Portugal.